So, um, what else I want to talk about here? Oh, actually, how it's going to impact um, restaurant workers. This is a really cool article, actually, from the BBC. Before we round up the coronavirus information and kind of move on to some more brighter things. So, I was going from the BBC that says the following here. Um, coronavirus, cafe and bar jobs gone by May. If laws don't change, says trade body, right? Which is, um, you know, something that I think a lot of us are aware, aware of. I think the jobs that require people to attend to be physically in a place somewhere um, are going to affect people the worst, especially things that are, you know, you get paid by the hour are going to be where people are going to really lose out. And unfortunately, we're in a position where now I think there aren't necessarily any, there's not, there's not many safety nets of people who don't have, who have, who have a job that doesn't allow you to kind of, you know, take sick days off or whatever, maybe or work from home. There's no real safety nets in there. Available at the moment. I'm not sure what universal credit is like. I'm not sure if people can sign in as easy as they did in the past. So it's going to be quite a bleak moment. And again, one of the places is going to suffer quite badly, especially now. Because I imagine this period of time, you know, from like March until April, June, July, is probably some of the most busiest periods for restaurants. I would assume so, right? I don't know how it works in restaurants. But does restaurants do, are restaurants more busy in the winter times or in the summer? I'd imagine summer season, right? Um, just you know, people tourists coming in and stuff. And people just generally went to sit outside and, you know, people watch, whatever it may be. Um, and especially with the influx of restaurants, it always feels like there's always a restaurant or a bar popping up somewhere. So those places are going to be affected the most, um, especially places that have like a big workforce, right? They have loads of waiters, loads of bar staff, a couple of front of house people, loads of t- you know tables to uh, see. They're going to really, really feel it. And I'm sure I've seen a lot of of chefs online already complaining that they're having to let go a few people because they just simply cannot afford to keep them on because there's no money coming in right um it's already difficult during the week especially if you're in a populated city and there's loads of competition it's already probably difficult to keep having enough water imagine then when you know a catch off event like this happens um and you're in a position where people are not willing to go outside because they don't want to catch a virus which essentially you know renders your your business null and void so this is an article from the bbc kind of touches upon this and explains it a little bit better than i just did there it says the following um hotel cafe and dining chains will fail and jobs will go if the government does not do more to help the industry a trade group has warned the chancellor in a letter to rishi sunak the lobby group hq hospitality said coronavirus was an existential threat to the sector it wants to change laws to allow temporary staff redundancies which is really good um uh, that'll be give them a little bit of a safety net and a cushion for like the next six months i did i did i did see um who said this um i think it was jason calcanis right the angel investor said that he advises all of these startups that he invests in or that he gives advice to to always have 18 months of runway left in their bank account runway is essentially like um you know savings that allow you to be to be operational if your product or service doesn't actually generate the money you think it's going to generate. But most businesses don't do that. Most businesses um probably rely on six months of runway because they feel as if like if they can't do it in six months, then why would they do it in eighteen? But I think the ease or the kind of lack of I don't know the lack of kind of um, pressure put on yourself to have 18 months of runway is probably beneficial in the long term because it allows you then to kind of get to work and think of, of some creative interesting way to kind of make a business work right i understand the kind of fight or flight oh let's six months or uh, and if it doesn't work it doesn't work but i would assume if you have 18 months runway it does allow you to kind of be a bit more calm a bit more rational and not kind of be a bit emotional and kind of make decisions just because you're afraid that you won't be able to kind of have ceo in your job title or in your bio um, if your business goes under in a really public way so it continues here. It says in the following, in the letter uh, seen by the BBC, Miss Nicole suggested broader support for the sector, such as introducing measures to permit temporary staff redundancies where demand falls sub- sub- subsequently. Right, with universal credit covering wage costs, which is awesome. Other government policies UK hospitality would like to see include a business rates holiday for businesses regardless of size, all payments to HMRC suspended for three months, and government statutory sick pay payments to all hospitals and businesses. Jobs at risk. Mix Miss and Miss Nichols told the bbc that even some of the largest hotel chains pub chains and casual dining brands are all run a risk of not existing going forward which is definitely true um i think if you look at some of the especially the bigger weather spoons and stuff they're definitely going to suffer a lot from this as well um such economic impact of the coronavirus pandemic um this is business critical these are the cash businesses put simply if you don't have people coming through the door you will run out of cash very very quickly so we are talking about intervention 
that is needed next week to make sure that in uh, six to eight weeks, these businesses continue to trade. And if we don't get that bit support by May, we'll be facing um, business failures and significant numbers of jobs at risk. And I'm sure that they're, they're only kind of really getting on them to do this now. Or I, I assume the government will make a change and will kind of enact some kind of effort to make sure these businesses don't kind of fall by the wayside because you know most of the especially most of the london boroughs are propped up by the restaurant and nightlife economy right they don't like to acknowledge it especially in nightlife economy they like to kind of close all the nightclubs and not allow them to kind of open for long and extended hours but they essentially are the the kind of the cash cow for the for the borough or the kind of city that you live in in the uk they're definitely bringing most of the money so I assume they will make some adjustments because once this coronavirus passes, if we're left in a situation where, you know, people are still afraid to go out or they want, they have the need to go out, but there's no places to go. And, you know, essentially people are partying indoors. It's not going to serve the government well. People are not going to be able to buy their villas, you know, in Marbella anymore. They're going to have to be able to have their second car or their second home somewhere in Oxfordshire. So it's within the, it's, it's in their best interest to kind of sort this out ASAP, really. Um, so this is the following here. Uh... This, this is affecting hospitality companies of all sizes and shapes. It's high street businesses um, that are seeing for, for decline. So your pubs, bars, cafes, and where you pop in for sandwiches, but also it's the larger companies across the sector. They are the firms that are employing the most people. I definitely agree with that one. Uh, what else is here? In Sunak's uh, first budget this week, businesses rates relief was guaranteed to companies at a relatable a uh, rateable value of less than 51,000. Uh, the measure applies to firms including shops, cinemas, and restaurants and hotels. However, Miss Nichols said that the that uh, because many of the biggest employers in the hospitality industry operate from the largest premises of the UK high street, they will not benefit from the new business rates at all. Jesus Christ. So, the following here, uh, three months left. The financial impact of the coronavirus pandemic on the hospitality sector is being shouldered by businesses large and small. But one hotel manager said businesses of his size were ignored by the Chancellor and are teetering on the brink. Mr. Cotman, in this group's uh, operations director at the York House Hotel in Eastbourne, and said his bookings are down by 60% and he expects them to get worse. Bloody hell. We've got the money to carry on for maybe two to three months, he said, and then we're out of money. Then what do we do about paying staff, paying VAT, paying the vegman, the butcher? We'll run out of money, said Mr. Cotman. That is insane, isn't it? One event happens in like some small rural town somewhere in the middle in nowhere land China has impacted this guy in his hotel in Eastbourne. So much so it's led to essentially, you know, him having to let go of half his workforce, people not being able to feed their families, put a roof over their heads, clothes on their back. It's just insane, isn't it? Like unprecedented this event, man. Mamma mia. Um so yeah, the large businesses like ours have received no assistance in the budget. We've been offered a facility to, of maybe applying for a loan, but of course that's going to be it's going to be paid back. If we're not taking any money, how can we pay the loan back? A Treasury spokesman said on Wednesday the Chancellor announced a total of thirty billion fiscal stimulus to support British people, jobs and businesses through the moment, through this moment. Jesus Christ. Tough times ahead, man. But yeah, definitely an opportunity for people, especially if you're gonna if you're gonna go out, right, and you're gonna go and have a drink, tip your bartender, tip your waitress, uh tip the front of house, tip whoever you can the money that they need in order to kind of survive because it's going to be some tough times for everybody involved. So if you are going to go out, which I don't suggest you do go out, but if you do go out, make sure you're uh, liberal and you're free with the whole tipping stuff and don't be tight. That's my suggestion in that regards.